Let's stick on this national security stuff. Okay. And I want to talk about the foreign aid bill um, yeah. that has been passed by the Senate. It was passed, I think, 70 to 29 this morning. So the 70 to 29, 70 senators voted to support the bill. What's in the bill? Well, this is $95 billion for military aid going to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. So all these different national security things that we literally just talked about. Everywhere the United States has some type of military interest or conflict going on, mm -hmm. getting money and weapons to those areas of the world. And I want to jump in just to say what the breakdown is a little bit more specifically. $60 billion to Ukraine, $14 billion to Israel, around $4 billion to Taiwan. Okay. There's a little bit left over for Gaza aid and other things. Gotcha. But those are the main chunks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then... The reason that this is so important is because this has been like a, a, a saga over the last like three months. How are we going to pass more Ukraine funding, right? Well, GOP members of the Senate and of the House said, we're not passing any foreign aid unless you give us a border bill. We're not doing anything for international security until you give us national security by securing our border. Yep. So GOP members of the Senate, led by uh, Lankford, the senator from Oklahoma, was working to get border provisions outlined with Democrats and independents to build this compromise that would be added on to the Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel funding. Well, uh, the border policy totally has been scrapped. Yep. Every Republican has turned against it. Even the guy who negotiated it didn't vote for it to go to move into debate. Yep. Everyone has shot it down. The Republicans in the House said it was dead on arrival. Don't even bring it to me. So now no more border. So that's why this is 95 billion. It was like 120 with the border stuff. Border is out. Only international security. Mm -hmm. 95 billion dollars. Trump has been intensely against this. And he has been pushing back against this emphatically because he doesn't want any money i don't know why he doesn't want this money going to ukraine but he doesn't want the money going to ukraine i think it's more political right it has yeah. to be right he doesn't yeah. want biden to get the win no wins yeah. no wins zero wins i think so yes um trump has said no money in the form of foreign aid should be given to any country unless it is done as a loan not just a giveaway i also think it just secure like it's no wins for biden but it also secures his base it's very on brand yeah Right? No money leaving here. Yes. So. But then that's the question. Is it a giveaway? Is it money leaving here? That's the question we have to ask. We have to attack this framing because yeah. is, is it even true? Mm. And the answer is no. This money is not simply a, a giveaway. Almost 90% of the funds that Congress approves for Ukraine and military aid is spent in the United States building new weapons or replacing ones that were already sent. Yeah. That is what's happening. 90% of the money is just going into producing more weapons in the United States. So out of the money, like and we've given a lot of money to Ukraine already. And and the benefits to the states have been widespread. We've seen a lot of benefits in California, Arizona, Arkansas, Pennsylvania. We're talking about over billion dollars plus in economic development going to these countries because of this. Mm -hmm. Now, this framing has issues, right? Because I'm not a war hawk. I, I don't want a, an economy built on international wars and bullets, okay? Warfare is not a replacement for welfare by any means. But it is wrong to sell this budgetary, this budgetary supplement package for Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel aid as being wasted abroad. Because that's just not true. It's being invested into the industrial base of the United States. Yeah. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. So Trump's framing of giveaway, that's not true. No, no. And it's frustrating that that just becomes the de facto position of so many members of the Republican Party. Yeah. And it's, it's frustrating that it's so easy for them to get that point across. Yeah. Right? Like, there there seems to be so little skepticism, so little call out of this. I haven't heard anyone else say this exact thing that we're saying. No, right I, I haven't heard almost anybody say this. No. I mean, if you go, I feel like you could go and you can look at some, some policy things written by the Biden administration on their website that might talk about it. But this isn't something that they're going to the mat with. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about it in depth. No. And it, it's frustrating because it just make the argument to people. Yeah. So much of this d r garbage that Trump spews out of his mouth could be pushed back against if you push back. Yeah. If you don't just let him control the conversation. Mm. Like really push back on all of his premises, right? Don't I don't know. It's like these people don't have spines sometimes yeah. to really go to the mat yeah. and take these challenges head on. Or I wonder if they're just skeptical that that people will listen to them enough to 
believe right to understand right. will to understand do they even care yeah so much of it is like oh trump said it exactly. at the end of story exactly. right exactly yeah um listen there is also this part of the united states that is deep and true of like America first, and I don't give a shit about what happens outside of this country. But yes. Mitch McConnell actually said something really good to this effect, okay? He says, I know it's been quite fashionable in some circles to disregard the global interests we have as a global power, to, be mo to bemoan the responsibilities of global leadership. This is idle work for idle minds, and it has no place in the United States Senate. That's awesome. Yeah, that, yeah yeah i mean like that's that's the type of mindset we should be going in with in it, a lot of these circumstances it is weird that we're now so praiseworthy of the the war hawk that is mitch mcconnell yes but that is the stage of war that we're in yeah and listen the united states has done some terrible things if we were involved in a war going on in like iraq like in 2003 yeah it would be a different story or say we were invading yemen with yes. boots on the ground right now because of the houthi attacks in the red sea Yes. That would not, we would not be on board with no, that. No, if we were invading Yemen to install a new type of government, yeah. no, we would not be for that under Absolutely any circumstance. Not. But when it comes to Taiwan, Ukraine, we are objectively on the right side of this conflict. Yeah. Israel, we are not on the right side of this conflict. No. I don't think there is a right side to this conflict. Both people deserve a state. Well, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. Point is, when it comes down to this NATO conversation of funding Ukraine, we are the good guys preserving international and independent sovereignty for states. Yes, totally. That's it. Totally. That's it. So now the question comes, okay, the Senate has passed this bill. Will the House pass it? Will Mike Johnson be able to rally his caucus of clowns into voting for this type of bill? Well, Johnson has expressed that support for Ukraine he generally feels the support for Ukraine, but he has not said whether he'd slate a House vote on the Senate's aid bill, which many conservatives in the House oppose. So I have Johnson's statement up here about the bill. Let's um, do it. It came out last night. I'm going to read it, okay? Yep. House Republicans were crystal clear from the very beginning of discussions that any so-called national security supplemental legislation must recognize that national security begins at our own border. <laughs> the House <laughs> acted 10 months ago to help enact transform policy change by passing the Secure Our Border Act. And since then, including today, the Senate has failed to meet the moment. The Senate did the right thing last week by rejecting the Ukraine, Taiwan, Gaza, Israel immigration legislation due to its insufficient border provisions. If you want to learn more about that, go check out our video or last week's episode. And it should have gone back to the drawing board to amend the current bill to include real border security provisions what? that would actually help end the ongoing catastrophe. Instead, the Senate's foreign aid bill is silent on the most pressing issue facing our country. Wait. The mandate of national security supplemental legislation was to secure America's own border before sending additional foreign aid around the world. It is what the American people demand and deserve. Now, in the absence of having received any single border policy change from the Senate, the House will have to continue to work its own will on these important matters. America deserves better than the Senate's status quo. Wait, that's insane cognitive dissonance that's insanity yeah that's insanity we literally just came off this whole conversation about the border and the republicans have been saying we don't need any law change we just need a different president to enforce the laws that already exist They've been saying explicitly. Were they saying yes, that? Yes, they said that explicitly. Okay. They said we don't need any legal changes. We just have to enforce the laws that already exist. They've said they said that explicitly. That's exactly what they said. It's crazy. That's exactly. They said we don't need any legal changes. Now they're saying we do need legal changes. We gave you a bill that has the national and international security involved. And now you're going to come back and you're going to tell me that we need to go back and get the border back in. You just said you wanted it separated a week ago. <laughs> This is insane. How do people not see that this is insanity? <laughs> that makes me so fucking pissed, dude. That makes me so mad. I hate that's the inconsistency. Wild. That's wild. They, Holy that's shit. That's why they were saying, they were like, leave it to the election. You'll be able to secure the border in 270 something days. Remember that quote? That's, that is crazy. It's because they're getting Trump to be back. They want Trump to be back in office. Yeah. Wow. Okay. See, I'm seeing Trump specifically, Trump posted on social media, a border bill is not necessary to stop the flow at the border. He said, close the southern border, no bill necessary. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And now they're saying a bill is absolutely necessary. How do people take these guys seriously? That's absurd. What? It was, it's been a week, bro. Did you get hit in the head? We don't need a border bill, according to Senator Ted Cruz. 
Wow. Wow. They literally said a week ago they don't need a border bill. Now Ma- they're sitting here claiming they need a border bill. Mike Johnson himself, the one I just quoted, said President Biden falsely claimed he needs Congress to pass a new law to allow him to close the southern border. <laughs> what is happening? <gasps> how are we supposed to work with these people? That is absurd. No, how are you supposed to work with these people? I mean, there is no way. There's no way. There is so, no way. There's no way. What? can Democrats do to try to get around this absolute fucking madhouse? Mm. Democrats are already lining up the path of submitting a discharge petition. What is a discharge petition? We got to go into that for a second. So a discharge petition means 50% plus one of the House can sign this petition that automatically guarantees a vote of a specific bill on the mm. House floor. Okay. Normally, the Speaker of the House has full control about what's get, what gets voted on on the floor. But with a discharge petition, if you get 50% plus one, which I think is 218 members, 217 members. 218, I think. Yeah. If they get that many members to sign on to this petition, they can bypass the Speaker of the House and get the bill to the floor. Okay. But the issue is any Republican who signs on to a discharge petition will have their career ruined forever. They will never get elected to anything ever again. They will be invited to zero Republican circles. Their whole career is done. Um, So, God, this, God. I know. That we have a two-party system, dude. Dude, Terrible. But uh, you know what? I'm going to attack the voters for a second. Okay. Please don't punish your representatives for compromising. Please don't. No. There's no... We are in a position with divided government, uh, one of the smallest House majorities in our entire history as a nation, okay? If you can't get over the fact that you don't have full control of the country and that you got to work across the aisle to get things done under certain circumstances, you do not have a place in government. And voters should know that going in and then reward people who at least do their best to make it work with the political conditions that they find themselves yes, in. Yes, it should be the opposite. Like those who are willing to have a spine and break from their party when it's necessary should yeah. be the ones rewarded. Yes. Yeah. There's another path to this. Brian Fitzpatrick. He's a moderate Republican coming out of Pennsylvania, but again, moderate in quotes because he's still not saying he would sign this discharge petition. Mm. He has indicated that he's opening. He's open to writing a whole new national security package with Democrats that would include funding for Ukraine and the southern border under more uh, among other priorities. That's so ironic, given what we've just been through this entire week. <laughs> yeah. Fitzpatrick could have just voted for the other bill. It yeah. could have been done. True. But now he's like, nope, I want to start the whole process over again. And we know what this looks like. We know when we go and start the whole process over again, nothing's getting done anyway. Oh, so it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Ugh. I just pray that there is a discharge petition, that there are enough Republicans. I'm looking at you, Don Bacon um, from Nebraska. I'm looking at uh, Mike Mike Lawler from New yep. York, maybe Mike Lawler. He's been a big national security hawk, mm-hmm. international security and Ukraine hawk. Just come around, guys. We need like please. five Less. Republicans. Two. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because because uh, tonight there's an election. It's Tuesday, uh, November twenty, uh, September, February thirteenth. <laughs> we're recording this. Um, Tom Swazi is running for uh, election in New York's third district. If he wins that, the House majority for the Republicans shrinks to two. Yep. So anyway, please do the discharge petition and pass this funding for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. For the love of God. Yeah. And even this, I'm not, I'm not that excited for. Like we're talking so much about the politics rather than the bill. Fourteen billion for Israel kind of sucks. That sucks ass. I don't want fourteen billion dollars going to Israel. No. And if it is going to Israel, I want way more conditions on it about like the exactly. limitations of settling going on in the West Bank. 